This is Sunny Television. Celebrating 21 years of God's miracles. To partner with us, advertise with us, or to sponsor any of our shows as a brand, business, ministry, church or individual, send emails to sunnytv2211 at gmail.com. Welcome back. And the prayer of faith, hallelujah, there's faith, shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise him up. And so I seem to be impressed to speak on prayer. didn't intend to spend as much time as I have, but uh, I just, the Holy Spirit held me there. And spend some more time speaking on faith and then eventually getting around to healing. So tomorrow night we'll have a special healing service here. We may minister to the sick tonight. I don't know. I'll tell you when we get there. <laughs> what we did. You hang around, you'll find out what we did. Praise the Lord. Can you say amen? amen? Now, actually, to get the best out of what we have been teaching you. Dr. Kenneth E. Hatchin was raised from the bed of sickness after being bedridden for about six months. Four different medical specialists concluded that he could not recover from the many diseases and conditions he suffered from and that he had a short time to live even though he was just 16 years old. But while reading Mark 11, he began to believe that he could be healed while walking on verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Miraculously, he got up blown from the bed after being bedridden for six months and lived to be 87 after the Lord called him to preach at 17. Later, the Lord commissioned Brother Kenneth with the following words, Go, teach my people faith, and he did all his days. If you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to open them to the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Here the Apostle Paul said, in the first part of the fifth verse, I would that ye all spake with tongues. Then in the 18th verse of this same opening, Paul declares, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than ye all. I'm going to speak to you on the subject, why speak with tongues? There has been much misunderstanding concerning this matter of speaking with other tongues, which has in some cases brought much damage to the cause of Christ and has certainly robbed multitudes of the blessing which God intended that they should have. One thing is sure and certain. It's not a subject to be cast lightly aside as unimportant to the body of Christ. God does not fill his book with things of minor importance. Neither does he make unnecessary statements. Kenneth E. Hagen. What a man he was. Brother Sonny says, if you want to learn quickly and accurately about faith, healing, the gifts of the Spirit, why believers should speak with tongues, the human spirit and how to grow up spiritually in a hurry, then you have to listen to Dr. Kenneth E. Hagen. Brother Hagen had an unusual ability to both recall scriptures and specific past events with remarkable details. I read a series of books by Kenneth E. Hagen in the early days, chief among them being, How to Be Led by the Spirit of God, The Spirit of Man is the Candle of the Lord, was the pivot scripture of that great book. Kenneth E. Hagen, wrote a lot of small booklets, but after reading them, your spirit feels like you have read one of the most voluminous books you ever read. I remember sharing with my wife about what I call jumping scriptures, each chapter of those booklets begins with a scripture passage, mainly from the New Testament. And when you read that scripture, it will seem as though it jumped from the pages onto your spirit and you can't stop thinking about it. It was awesome. One of Hagen's favorite quote was, You can become so word conscious that whatever happens in your life, your first reaction would be, What does the word of God have to say about this? We shall read the 22nd verse through the 26th verse of Mark chapter 11. 
And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Now I want you to call I want to call your attention to a fact that in that twenty third verse, the word pray is not in that verse. Pray or prayer is not in that verse. But the word say is. Now read the twenty fourth verse. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray. Now the word pray is in the twenty fourth verse. When ye pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. Now here's my sixth point, and I want you to get it because it's very important. Faith will work by saying it without praying. Do you see that in the 23rd verse? Never said a word about praying there, or prayer. But faith also works in prayer. But when you pray it, you still have to say it. Now I'll say that again because that's a little catchy. My sixth point is faith will work by saying it or it'll work by praying it. But when you pray it, you still have to say it. Now let's take it in that order and notice. 23rd verse, look at it again. We see faith working without praying but by just simply saying what you believe. Whosoever shall say, Jesus said, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. He didn't say he'll have whatsoever he prayeth. He said he'll have whatsoever he saith. Now these two verses, Mark 23, 11, 23, and 24, are the two verses of scripture that brought me off of the bed of affliction brought healing to my body from a almost total paralyzed condition, an incurable blood disease, and two serious organic heart troubles. So therefore, I've always been a stickler for these scriptures, and of course they're true, because Jesus told the truth, didn't he? And I was healed sort of on the combination of the two of them. I said, when you pray, you still have to say it. It was when there on the bed of affliction after I'd prayed that I said it. I said it out loud and it was when I began to say out loud, not think it. He didn't say, whosoever shall think, he shall have whatsoever he thinketh. He didn't say that. He said, whosoever shall say, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I began to say out loud in my room, I believe that I receive. That's what I believe, you see. You know how whatsoever he said. I believe I'll receive a healing from my body. And I, I specified these things. The heart condition, the paralysis, the incurable blood disease. And then finally I just simply said, I believe I'll receive healing in case I'd miss something from the top of my head to the sole of my foot. That takes in it all, doesn't it? And you know, when I began to say it, now you don't all, not all, the manifestation uh, of it will, will not always come this fast. But, but within the hour, Every symptom of physical deficiency I had that disappeared, I was standing out of the bed on the floor healed. Praise God. We never feel comfortable to close an episode of Legends of the Faith without first letting you hear the salvation story of the legend because we want you saved if you are not yet born again. But if you already have eternal life, we want you inspired to share your faith with someone else. Those who shared their faith with a legend whose remarkable story you just heard never knew that their new convert would become a global general of the faith. Kenneth Hagen Ministries gives a very unusual account of the translation testimony of this unusual man of God. It reads like the translation testimony of the Apostle Paul in the Acts of the Apostles, raised as a Southern Baptist. 
Kenneth attended church every week. He thought he was saved, but he had never had a salvation experience with the Lord. However, on the 22nd day of April, 1933, in the south bedroom of 405 North College Street in McKinney, Texas, that salvation experience came in an unforgettable way. As Kenneth lay on the bed of sickness, his spirit left his body. He descended through the earth and continued down until he stood before the very gates of hell. Just as he was about to enter, a voice from above sounded in an unknown tongue. Immediately, Kenneth found himself returning to the earth's surface. This happened twice more. During his third ascent to the surface, Kenneth finally proclaimed Jesus as Lord. He knew that if he did not do so, he would descend a fourth and final time. To give your heart to Jesus. Say these words. Jesus, Son of the Living God, I believe, I believe you, Jesus. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. Jesus Christ, Son of the Most High God, I receive you. I say with my mouth what I believe in my heart, that Jesus is my Lord, my Savior my master i am sorry for my life that i've lived i am sorry for the things that i've done receive me jesus forgive me jesus help me jesus i believe I believe, I believe that you are the Son of God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, if you're going to talk about faith, I don't know of any better place to start than the 11th chapter of Mark's Gospel. If you're going to speak on the subject of faith, sooner or later you're going to have to get there anyway, so you might as well start there. The simple reason, as you go through the four Gospels, you'll find that what Jesus said about faith as is recorded in Mark's Gospel are actually the most illuminating words on the subject. Amen. And uh, I guess really through this 50 years of ministry that I preached on this particular text more than any other text in the Bible. I remember some friends said to me one time several years ago, to be more explicit, about uh, 20, uh, two years ago, uh, you know, I've heard you, I don't know, about 10 times preach from, Ma from Mark 11, 23, and 24, and you never do preach it the same. You always come up with something new. I believe you've got at least 10 variety of sermons. I said, no, I've got 50. <laughs> Praise God. The Word of God is inexhaustible. Are you listening to me? God bless you for watching Legends of the Faith on Sunny TV. To partner with us by paying for the airing of this show, send email to sunnytv2211 at gmail.com. See you next time when we zero in on the life of another legend who has joined the cloud of witnesses, as the Spirit leads us.